hey guys what's up welcome back to another video and in today's maya maya leaks we're gonna be talking about chapter 239 so guys sit back and take a seat and also leave a like and subscribe so you guys don't miss any future videos and with that said let's hop right into the video so the chapter starts with a woman running away from someone and is angry at kenjaku for the calling games she believes that it is way too cruel to give life to people by turning them into cursed objects only to take it away from them again. So she then gets trapped by a jellyfish curse as Kenjaku says, if it's too tasteless I'll add some more flavor and if it's too strong I'll add more of the original. You people are like seasoning and water to me, I don't have any particular feelings towards you. And this is really showing how cold Kenjaku can really be. He doesn't really cares about anyone other than himself and his plans. She then tries to fight back but Kenny fully sees her head and says, Even though I don't have any particular feelings towards you people, I sometimes feel like you guys are too good to waste. Kenjaku then keeps talking telling her that he applied cursed objects on the reincarnated sorcerers and cursed symbols on the awakened sorcerers to trap them. Suddenly, someone arrives at the scene and questions why bother taking a dead person. And we then later find out that this is Hazanoki, a reincarnated sorcerer who worked with Registar. Kenjaku then jokes around talking about what qualities he needs in a friend. And the qualities Kenjaku are looking for is that they shouldn't bore him and they should be on the same level as him. Funny enough, Hazanoki then makes fun of Kenjaku by saying that Kenjaku talks to himself so much because of how long he has lived. Kenjaku also chimes to stating that the number of his friends also are declining. He then asks Hazanoki to wait and watch Gojo and Sukuno fight. Kenjaku also realized that Sukuna evolved his curse technique to defeat Satoru Gojo and adds got a good looking face there, possibly talking about Gojo. Kenjaku then starts talking again explaining that he left his curses at Shinjuku to check whether someone has left and he does so by looking at the total amount of cursed energy in the city. He also adds that he knows the amount of cursed energy held by each sorcerer as well, furthering that Yuta is especially noticeable due to his vast resources of cursed energy. And that was a thing I really meant to talk about before making this video, where the hell is Yuta Okatsu? Kenjaku also shares sight with his curses, meaning he has CCTV cameras all over Shinjaku as well. Kenjaku is done talking as he attacks Hazanoki with his curses, and he then later tries to retaliate but is overwhelmed by the countless numbers of curses attacking. Before dying, Hazanoki asks Kenjaku about his true objective, and then Kenjaku confirms that he wants to end the culling games by killing all of the players and he'll use them in the binding vow he made to activate the merging process of Tengen with all of the people in Japan. And then Kenjaku also asks the question saying don't you want to know if something you thought interesting was true or not? Isn't that what living is all about? Before dying, Hazanoki tells Kenjaku to look at his own poo every morning to satisfy his curiosity in a funny moment, allowing a seamless switch to the next character's entry, Takaba. Kenjaku is done talking and seems like he instantly wants to attack Takaba, which he did, and wondering why Takaba came alone. As then Meimei isn't there watching Kenjaku right now either. He then further states that he is only interested in Higuruma when it comes down to well awakened sorcerers. Kenjaku is shocked when Takaba survives his attack and completely looks fine. So Takaba is now looking like a major threat or a mini threat for Kenjaku. Takaba then says you shitty monk, you tried to kill me, I'm not forgiving you, gonna get your ass in jail. And Kenjaku gets it's a bad feeling about this. He's also extremely intrigued, stating what was that. It's the first time I've felt anything like this. It wasn't that there was no damage. 
it was like he made it so there was no damage. Takaba then states that there are a lot of things to be excited about and the most exciting thing is when a entertainer who's only was supposed to match numbers takes over the whole show and Kenjaku seemingly agrees as the two prepare to fight. The chapter ends and there will be no break next week. So we definitely got trolled. Gege trolled us letting us think that Higuruma and Itadori will be fighting Sukuno. I was really 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 looking out for that fight but I guess everything was moving way too fast and Gege wanted to slow things and let us know what everyone else was doing. So the next chapter we might be seeing Takaba and Kenjaku fighting or Gege might show us what Yuta is actually doing because as I said where the hell is Yuta? Guys what do you guys think happened to Yuta? I really want to know. Is Yuta still there or is Yuta gone? My personal thoughts well at first at chapter 237 or 238 I thought Yuta just dipped out of there because he saw that Gojo died and was like okay I can't do anything against Sukuna I'm just gonna get my ass out of here but my personal thoughts now really do think that he's healing Gojo because he's not at Kenjaku and he's nowhere to be seen fighting Sukuna so he definitely should be somewhere close to Ken, well, Gojo. Well, that's are my personal thoughts. Definitely let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. Did you guys enjoy these weeks or did you guys find it mid? It was a bit okay. I really wanted to see the fight, but everything does make sense and the fight will happen eventually. There's no need to rush Jujutsu Kaisen. Anyways, when we get some more information, I'll definitely update the video and let you guys know. So subscribe, leave a like, and I will see you all in my next video.